Hi everyone, welcome to the QEOps channel, I'm Rafael Lima and today we're going to improve our code a little further. We're going to be implementing clients, so we're going to have now classes that are going to be doing the actual uh, actions of what we need to do in our application, very similar to the page object in, in, in UI testing. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, hit the bell so you can receive notification of my next videos. I'm also going to be posting the, the previous videos so, it, 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 so you can keep it up, which is very important that you do so you can know how to build everything that you have been doing so far. Right? So let's start. So we have here the presentation that I did uh, in the beginning of the series. And what we are actually going to implement is the API part. We already did the features, we already did the config, we for sure, and the domain and the step definitions. Now we're going to come to this, we also did the Cucumber Runner. But now we're going to be coming to this part here, which is the actual client. I'm calling here API, uh, I could call client. Uh, but anyway, so... We also have the application already working here. We have the application locally. Uh, I also already show how to do this. And now what we're going to do first is we're going to do a little cleaning up. Let's clean the house. We're going to be using the specification by example approach, which is this one here. So we're going to be deleting this, right? So before we delete, we're going to first make sure it's not being used. Right now it's being used. And also we're going to make sure everything is running. So I'm running all the tests, uh, everything passed. Uh, and now I can start changing here my stuff, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold Control or Command and click uh, on the mouse. Another thing that I can do is Command B, right? It's the same. It's good. To, it, it goes to the implementation. So we don't need this anymore because this this is not what the way that we want to do. I'm going to do the same here. We don't want this because this is not the way that we want to do. We also don't want this. This is not the way that we want to do. And neither is this one. I think this one, it was already the same. So this one's fine. Uh, last video I showed that this is messing up IntelliJ. So that's why it did not uh, mark as not, not found, which is this one, right? We deleted. Now I can come here and delete. Delete everything, we have only one test, that's fine. So another thing that we're going to do in our step definition is that here, this is not being used anymore. And because we had uh, similar implementations of the same thing, the same scenario, I created the expected user and this is a user that's also called expect, which is the same as expected user, because we are, this is the what we're expecting, right? You have expected user and you have actual user, right? The expected user is what you create and what you're expecting, and the actual user is what is on the system. So we don't need this one anymore. I'm going to delete this. And this one I'm going to be calling expected user because just user, we don't actually know which kind of user it is. So I'm going to right click it, go to refactor and rename. I could also hit uh, shift F6 and now I'm going to call expected user and you're going to see that these already change everything here. And if this would be, uh, if this was used in another classes, it would also change in other classes, the name. Great, um, I already did some coding, some changes. I'm going to rerun my test, right? So I'm going to come here and I'm going to re-execute my test. You can see that everything worked fine. Uh, we can move forward, right? So, so now we're going to actually create our, our, our API, right? So uh, if we go here to the keynote, you're going to see that this is where it support API. So we already have support domain. I cannot cre create another package here because it's going to be under domain and I don't want that. I'm going to come to new uh, in, in this package, new package, and I'm going to say support uh what it was in uh, api and we see that now this was separated in in their own hierarchy which is perfect uh api right click new java class i'm going to call this user api you could call use api client i'm just going to say use api which is fine uh, great so now what you're going to do is exactly what we have here 
right? So the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to copy. I'm going to show you two ways. One is going to be public void. Uh, we are not returning anything here, right? So that's required. It's void and it's create user. This is what we are doing. We are creating the user. Create user, right? And I'm pasting here what I copied. I'm going to uh, make it pretty. Great. Now this user is expecting a user, right? So we we need to send a user because my expectation is going to be part of my test, the creation of my user. That's what my test knows. But the action my test does need to know that how it does the post. It just need to do it. Right. So I'm going to create a user. I'm going to expect a user to be sent here. Uh, the user was not imported. Alt enter and it's going to import the user right here. Uh, all right, this is user, not expected user anymore. And then the point is not here. So then the point we created here, I'm going to copy here and I'm going to paste it here. Great, I'm going to make it pretty as well. Uh, sorry, that was in the wrong place. Uh, this is in this class. Awesome. Uh, all right, so now I need to call it, right? This is not being used, this is not being used. So what I can do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to say I use, I'm going to create a use API called use API and I need to actually instantiate it, right? So use API and I'm going to do the actual action, which is create user, uh, passing the expected user, right? I'm going to comment this out for now and I'm going to rerun all the tests, control R, uh, here on the left, you might not see it fully because you was if you're looking at me, uh, I'm in front uh, of that. But then you're going to see that everything has passed, and now I can delete this. Awesome. This also was already used. I can delete this. So now, now let's take a look at this one, right? So this is the same process. We, we now we are getting the user, and we are already doing the assertion here, right? The assertion is going to be part of my test. But what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do a different way. I'm going to select the whole thing that I want to change to refactor. I'm going to right click it, refactor, and I'm going to say extract method. And I'm going to give it a name. It's going to be public because this is going to be in another uh, class. And I'm going to say get username. Alrighty, now you're going to see that he already removed and created own method. I'm going to copy everything and I'm going to paste it here. I need to make it pretty. Uh, awesome. This also needs to receive a user, right? Because I'll be passing something that it needs to call. Right? So I'm going to be passing a user user and this is going to be user. Now, instead of doing a refactor, I'm going to mark it down and I'm going to click, uh, not click, but uh, to type uh, control G and it's going to select the same name. This is nice. This is not the refactor because the refactor is going to look at the whole project. This is just the file and now I can change both of them. Uh, great. Now this is still not being used and there is a problem here because this is, this is a problem here. So another thing that we need to do is you need to understand that we are checking, every, we were checking everything here, right? So we are doing the status code and the body right here. This is fine, uh, but now that we, we need to do the, uh, in another class, we need to return the actual username, which is this, what we want, right? We want the username, right? The, the username of our API. If you look at our API and we go to user, get user you're going to see here that it is username see it right so this is what we want so what i'm going to say instead of doing this i'm going to say hey i would like to you that you would return the path username which is my json path right which is this path here username uh, this is XML, right? It's JSON. Username. And since this is a return, I need to do string. And I need to return it. Right? 
awesome and now i need to fix this because this is what i can what i could do is i could create another api use api do user dot api use api dot uh, get username passing the expected user but this is the same as this one and i don't actually need two classes two instances of that same class use api so what i can do is i can put on my constructor right i, I also need to remove this to be this already here right so this is not being used anymore so now i can create my constructor here so i can do public user step definition that's how you create a constructor and now i can actually come here and i can say that i have a private user api use api use api variable and i'm going to use my constructor to initiate that initiate that so it's new use api user api great um, i now i can delete this and i can delete this i you would have a different instance in, in, in each method if you would be changing that that object, right? You would change its attribute, you would change something uh, in different methods. We are not changing, we are just using. And now we can rerun everything, right? But there is still one thing that we didn't do is we are returning in our API, but we are not using it here. So I can I need to say and this variable the username is going to be uh, attributed to another variable. I'm going to say actual username. All right? So now I have a username. We we need to before we were what we were doing, we were actually using Restorer to do the assertive. Restorer was actually checking if what he returned from the he got from the JSON was actually what uh, we we had right uh, we wanted actually so what we need to do we need to use now a library called assert that we could use assert true assert equals there are J unit libraries but assert that is a hemcrest library which is I think it's better. Uh, because it's more uh, the way colloquial, the way that you read it, right? So I'm going to import it. I'm going to import the RAM crest one, not the JUnit one. And now I'm going to say uh, my actual username needs to be equal to something. And I'm going to use the is. So I assert that actual username is what? Is the expected user dot get username right why dot get username because this is the object so if you go to the user this is the object but because we are using lambok on the with the data annotation we have access to get and setters we get getters and setters that's why we can do this i'm going to be posting the video so you can see how we did that so now i can rerun everything Control r and you're going to everything's fine awesome one thing that we can check is that i can modify my builder here and i'm going to say that now i want to change my username to be john week All right so i'm going to rerun everything i'm going to copy here it passed and if i come here to my to my api john wick john wick is here everything else is the same as rafael but the username is john wick and why rafael it's the same because our builder is using a default builder with the values that are default but we only change the username in the builder video we're going to check how we did that right so but i'm going to remove this because i don't want to change this i don't care about the username being different now everything is done so now you can see that we change a lot of code to just two lines the 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 creation the expectation and the actual action and then just asserting that so you can we can reuse this more and have now 
our API, which is going to be the action of our interaction, not the action, but it's going to be the way that we interact with the API that our test does not need to know how they are, how it's actually doing. It just need to call it, right? So this is what I want to show you. Thank you for watching this far. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Hit the bell to receive the notification. Uh, if you like, give the thumbs up. And uh, I ask you to really give the thumbs up because uh, the YouTube algorithm uses the like to share this video with a broader audience. Uh, help me spread the, these videos to other folks that also need it and also to help, help me to broadcast my channel to more people, right? Thank you and I see you on next video.